I wanted to bring today's episode to the podcast talking all about diet. As we go into the fall season, we are going to be making some dietary changes that can improve the chances of pregnancy success. And a lot of times we may have made some of these changes and second guessed if it even has worked. So if you've taken out gluten or maybe you've tried to take out dairy and you're like, I didn't even notice a difference and nothing has worked or you've or you followed a fertility diet, or maybe you're taking some fertility teas or some herbs, and you're wondering, or you're doing seed cycling, all of these pieces, you know, and you're wondering why you're still not pregnant. So it's important to take a very personalized approach. We're going to be going through the strategies, the three-step strategy for things for you to look at right now so that you can improve your chances of pregnancy success with low AMH and or high FSH, diminished ovarian reserve, and premature ovarian insufficiency. Let's go. As I record this here in October, we are having a major heat wave in the 80s or 28 degrees Celsius, So, um, which is good. So I'm enjoying the uh, last days of summer as in Canada, we go into the cold freeze soon. So um, today I wanted to, as we're shifting into the autumn fall season, um, we've got our new fertility diet recipe guide is out. So definitely want you to check that out. And we're going to be talking about some of the biggest diet and nutrition mistakes we see and how to avoid them, especially if you have low AMH and or high FSH. So let's talk about the first one we see, which is people tell me all the time that they're already eating clean air quotes, eating clean. They've made a lot of changes. They've already tried going gluten-free, dairy-free. They've, you know, made some of these generalized dietary uh, recommendations. And so sometimes we give up before we strike gold or in this case, um, pregnancy. So there we are chipping away in the coal mine, the gold's on the other side and we start to not trust the process where, where there's, there's self-doubt. Is this diet thing really, you know, going to shift the needle for us? And what we see, a theme with low AMH and high FSH is non-celiac gluten sensitivity. So gluten off the charts and some of the cross-reactors around gluten, such as dairy, corn, oats, um, and more. And so we do an elimination diet, which on the podcast, you can check out that how, how and why to do an elimination diet. diet. And then also... Um, then basically taking out the top allergens for 10 days and then systematically reintroducing the foods over the course of 30 days. And so I'm just going to take, go, go through some of these um, symptoms that you may be, or problems that you may be experiencing right now. A lot of the times we myopically focus in on the low AMH and high FSH, but, and then ignore some of the other health issues we're, we're dealing with. And these are clues as to why you may be struggling to conceive right now. So the first thing is, if you've got a digestive issue going on, that is a hard and fast clue that there is a problem with something that you are eating. And many times people will say, oh, I have dairy and it gives me bloating, or, you know, I have, I have corn and I feel my sinuses pl plug up. Well, if you know that a certain food gives you a problem, stop eating it, <laughs> right? So you know for sure. If you're not able to make the correlations with, with, with this, if you've, you've got diarrhea, constipation, acid reflux, bloating, gas, burping, if you're dealing well with all this, but you don't really know which food it is, it is, is key to then do that elimination diet, and then you'll tweak it with food sensitivity testing. Uh, and then to be able to bring most of the foods back in, we need to then do stool testing to address infections. So if you've got a leaky gut, which could come from high antibiotic use, high stress, done a whole episode on the podcast on the adrenals. We see this with low AMH and high FSH, just a lot of stress. People working more than 50 hours a week. People doing working plus they're doing a graduate program. People obviously have gone through multiple failed IVFs. People dealing with um, a loss of a pregnancy, a loss of a loved one, um, being told donor eggs. I got people telling me that they're you know, in the middle of Target or they're driving and they get a call from a clinic saying, hi, um, we've looked at your, your numbers here and it looks like donor eggs are your only option. Like that in itself is traumatic. So a lot a lot to deal with here, which then, you know, your adrenals, which then impact your thyroid, which then directly impacts your AMH, FSH, and your follicle count. So, and your, your uh, ovarian reserve. So it's really um, important to, so the quality of your eggs, not the quantity. So it's really important to address these things. So first of all, you got a digestive issue. 
you need to dig into this. And like we said, the elimination diet, tweak it. That is a, a huge clue. All that stuff may be common, burping, gas, bloating, all that stuff, di um, constipation, diarrhea may be common, but it's not normal and it's a clue. Mood problems. Many times people tell us they've had anxiety for years, depression for years, panic attacks, ADHD, and then you may be taking medication, maybe taking um, SSRIs for this to help, but we're not getting to the root. We're not, you're not getting the missed healing opportunity. So conventional medicine will pass you a pill, not digging deeper. So the health of your gut and your neurotransmitters, a lot of podcasts I've done on, on that. So if you've got mood problems, um, that is a clue for us to dig deeper. Also, when your hormones are in balance, then, you know, with the adrenals, many times people think I'm in, I'm in menopause. Maybe it's your adrenals with all that, all that extra stuff that you're doing. And just because you're a type A action oriented person and you can cope well, doesn't mean your body's coping. That was me. I, I felt fine mentally. And, well, until I didn't, until I was yelling at my husband, I'm like, okay, we know when things are out of balance, when you got road rage and you're, and you're, you know, picking fights with, with your husband and like, we've been married for 27 years and he's just a very calm, um, patient person. <laughs> and I have for years dealing with this, like such irritability, obviously my hormones were, uh, were imbalanced, but if you've got, and so it was blood sugar issues for me and a whole host of other things, if you've got mood problems, obviously going, dealing with the fertility journey in itself, there could be situational anxiety. You're going through a lot right now, but if you've always had mood issues and now you're trying to conceive that is a huge red flag to dig deeper. So mood problems, skin issues. I can't tell you the number of people tell me they're dealing with acne. They have eczema. They have psoriasis, dermatitis. They have hives, something going on in the skin. The skin is a direct reflection of the health of the gut. We need to dig deeper and putting on steroid, you know, steroid creams or acne solutions and all that sort of stuff is just a band-aid. We've got to dig deeper. We see this all the time. The skin will clear up. People have been scratching like crazy with hives and eczema for their whole life. And then as they make these targeted diet and healing those, those gut infections, these skin problems improve. And this is a clue if you're dealing with diminished ovarian reserve, premature ovarian insufficiency, um, low AMH, high FSH, looking at the health of the skin is key. We see this all the time as one of the themes. Okay, joint problems. I literally, uh, I was away a little while ago. Um, I got glutened and I literally could feel like I had tennis elbow, carpal tunnel syndrome, and an old knee injury started flaring up. And I, I was away last weekend with some girlfriends and literally they're like, my whole body hurts. I can barely get off my chair. Let's just do chair yoga. And, you know, I've just got so much pain. And I'm like, I don't really know what they're talking about because I don't have painful joints. But when I eat a food, that's inflammatory, I'll tell you right now, it feels like every part of my body is hurting. So if you've got joint problems from a bad back to muscle pain, like those arthritis joint, there's some clue. Is there, is there underlying inflammation? And then your body wants to survive, not procreate. That's a huge clue, dig deeper. Um, the next one is autoimmune disease. I can't tell you, <laughs> I feel like it's on, on repeat here, but I can't tell you how many people have come to me and they have Hashimoto's plus low AMH and high FSH. They are dealing with celiac disease, so actual celiac, not the non-celiac, celiac disease. They have got type 1 diabetes. They have rheumatoid ar arthritis. They have MS. They have lupus. They ha are dealing with an autoimmune disease. And then what's happening is they are pushed towards IVF. And then no one addresses the autoimmune disease. The best thing to help reverse and heal autoimmune disease is functional nutrition, functional medicine. It, otherwise, you're going to be taking all sorts of medication. We've got people with ulcerative colitis and Crohn's. And um, even though they may be in remission, is there still inflammation underneath? And, and we've seen that this is the case. We've seen people go through multiple failed IVFs with ulcerative colitis, um, even though all the markers are saying it's fine. But when we dig deeper, there's still inflammation in there. And that's, cause, and that's a reason why they're not able to conceive. So as we, again, start to reduce that inflammation, so your C-reactive protein, if that's if that's high, if, you, if it's over one considered high, and we see people with it a lot higher. So um, being able to address an autoimmune disease is key. And so making those targeted diet and lifestyle changes along with healing the gut. So um, like we said, to be able to take out the top allergens, which are dairy, gluten, soy, corn, peanuts, eggs, processed sugar, and alcohol for 10 days, systematically reintroduced. It is not about you starving and drinking, uh, drinking green juice. It's about 
eating organic poultry, wild caught fish, grass fed meat, uh, half the plate veggies. You can do some uh, potatoes uh, or, or rice if you tolerate it, if you don't have a glucose issue or an insulin issue um, and being able to see how food impacts your body. So definitely look at that fertility diet freebie. So go to fertility diet freebie.com. And there's the, the, there's the autumn fertility recipe guide, five days of recipes, meal plan, grocery shopping list, all to get you started. So I'll just share a little success story here with you. So she's 36, um, she had premature ovarian insufficiency. So high FSH, low AMH, had secondary fertility issues. Her IVF was canceled because she was a poor responder. She had an irregular ovulation and, and, and her ovulation was unknown and she had an irregular cycle. Ooh, it's hot. <laughs> I'm sweating in here. It's the, the, the heat today. Um, long-term hormonal birth control. We see that as a theme being on that. That can then predispose you to gut infections and food sensitivities. And then um, she had asthma, migraines, insomnia, sinus congestion, eczema, anxiety. So a lot of those things that we just talked about um, as some clues, she was dealing with all of them. Um, she had seven of those things. Uh, poor digestion, so alternating between constipation and diarrhea, and chronic stress from the fertility journey being triggered by seeing families, by seeing other children, um, and also a high-stress job. So we did the, the functional testing. So we do food sensitivity testing using blood. Stool testing, looking at the DNA of the stool, genetic testing, looking at your gene variants, and then what are the, the specific diet and lifestyle and supplement recommendations to support those genes. So it becomes a very personalized approach. And this is a female hormone panel, different than what you're getting at your fertility clinic. We're looking at FSH, thyroid, your methylation pathway. So if you have that MTHFR gene variant mutation, 80% of the population can have it. We see this a lot. And they're not able to assimilate your uh, methylate, your B vitamins. Lots of um, podcast episodes I've done on MTHFR. Definitely want just to make sure you take in methyl folate. Um, and then we need to dig deeper as well to make sure we can support those methylation pathways. Um, and then we are doing blood chemistry review for both you and your partner. And then semen analysis, looking at the semen and the blood chemistry, making sure we may have been told those, those levels are normal, but are they optimal? We found out for this person that she had non-celiac gluten sensitivity. She was also intolerant to eggs, yeast, whey, nuts. Um, both her and her partner did the elimination diet. It's not just about you doing it. You're doing it with your partner. Uh, we balanced her hormones. She did have estrogen dominance. Um, she had low melatonin, which could be an indicator of gut bugs. A lot of the times we're, we're supplementing with melatonin. So then that just puts it high. But why is it, why is it low to begin with? Um, and that's just sort of a generalized recommendation to do melatonin because you said it can help with IVF, but why is it low? What's been missed? And then the thyroid imbalance, like we see, I think it's saying 99% of the time, there's something going on with the thyroid, thyroid with an AMH, with low AMH and a high FSH, low follicle count. We need to look at the health of the thyroid, which is usually triggered by the adrenals. And so again, is it, is it really early menopause or is it your adrenals? Um, and then we're looking at so the stool. We did the stool testing. She had bacteria. She had a low immune system. Are you the kind of person that catches every cold and flu that, you know, someone walks by and sneezes, next thing you know, you're sick. Um, if that's you, your immune system can be low. We see people with low vitamin D and then also parasites with low vitamin D, D and autoimmunity. So um, very, very important to be um, looking at um, that the, the, the immune system. Again, your body wants to survive, not procreate if you've got all this, all this um, uh, inflammation with your body. High anti-gliadin. So in, in the stool test, we can see that even if you say, hey, I'm gluten-free, I'm celiac, and I'm gluten-free, we can see in the stool test, are you still getting gluten? And it could be those cross-reactors. The body is identifying gluten. It's identifying dairy and corn and... Um, oats as gluten and, and it mounts an immune response. And then we're, we're, we're having inflammation, a lot of mental, emotional stress. She had a hard time visualizing pregnancy success. And she was a lot of impatience, a lot of impatience. We did this a lot of the time, uh, her partner, we optimized his blood sugar, helped him set some boundaries, improved his sleep. And then, uh, she went to do a retrieval. And when she went to do the retrieval, she thought she found out that she was pregnant. So this is after her being multiple failed IVFs told she was a poor responder, told the donor eggs are her only option. And she, and she did the work, followed the plan and, and had success. So our average success is around 12 to 18 months.
Okay, so mistake number two when we are trying to figure out uh, the dietary piece is um, see which diet is right for us. And, and with low AMH and high FSH is and that's also a mistake is sort of a thing. You know, there's no mistakes. We, we always do the best that we can, um, you know, where we, where we are. And the more, you know, knowledge is power. If you're here listening to this, it's for a reason for you to be able to, you know, look at things completely differently and not to beat yourself up and say, oh, my goodness, I should have known this like – Two years ago, I could have shortened the time. That's not that's not the whole piece of the piece of this. You need, you can't you've got to give yourself some grace. Be kind to yourself. You know you found this for a reason. It's and now it's time to take action and make change because we can consume this stuff all day long. If you don't take action, it doesn't it doesn't mean anything. So right now, you could be doing generalized recommendations. There's a whole bunch of information out there on books, podcasts, <laughs> blogs. Um, but are those recommendations right for you? A lot of times people are reading It Starts With The Egg. I did a whole podcast on what to do after you've read It Starts With The Egg because that's one of the most popular books in the fertility community and it has some really good information. But again, it's more generalized recommendations helping you improve the chances of IVF. And they do talk about diet and lifestyle changes, but but anyways, listen to that podcast episode because it just goes a lot deeper on some of the recommendations from It Starts With The Egg where people kind of go off the rails and say, hey, I've done all these things and it didn't work. Well, it was generalized recommendations. You are your own person and we're all unique. So if you're doing the latest fertility diet, obviously we have that fertility diet recipe guide. Um, we're taking out the top allergens and then, you know, maybe you've got to go deeper. Maybe for we, when we do the food sensitivity testing, we find out you're intolerant to lettuce. I've had some, I had one person who's you know, pounding down avocados um, cause they're a fertility superfood, but they made her throw up and she kept eating them because she thought she needed to have them. Not the case. Maybe, maybe that's not right for you. You've got that leaky gut. And then when you start to address that and heal it, you can bring most of the foods back in. Maybe you're doing a bunch of fertility herbs. Some of those can be good, you know, Vitex, maca, um, um, you know, red raspberry tea, clover tea. Some of those things can be good, but you know, is it right for you? All again, some of those teas we're taking, we need to take you know, higher quantities of them to even have, I've done a whole blog on my podcast all about fertility teas. Um, I think people waste a lot of time doing some of these things where they think they're doing, doing a service, but you got to do it in a targeted manner. And so, um, and you know, is that, is, is that right for you? Um, and that's self-diagnosing based on the latest fads. Oh, maybe I should go carnivore. Maybe I should go, I should do some fasting. Maybe that's better for a man rather than a cycling woman. Maybe the fasting is then impacting your blood sugar, which then impacts your sex hormones, and it's not the right move for you. So it's really important, again, to take that, that uh, personalized approach, using the testing, doing the elimination diet to see, you know, it's the gold standard. There's a lot of egg diets and sperm diets, all this sort of stuff, all based on the elimination diet, which is the gold standard, taking out the top allergens, reintroducing over 30 days, and then seeing how food impacts your body. So you can follow all those, all those recommendations, but you've, you've got to dig in with what's right for you because you just could be, you know, might be missing it. You're wondering, then, then you, you stop because you're like, well, I didn't notice any difference when I took out gluten. I had no, nothing happened. Well, maybe you have internal inflammation. And for you, that's, it's, if we were to see on your stool test that you've, you've got, um, you're, you're still getting gluten and your body doesn't, it's not reacting to it. And then you've got all this, all this inflammation in your body. So, um, and so sometimes people give up before they've, they've reached a goal. You just got to dig in deeper. It's not about going wider. Like, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try that. I'm going to go over here, over there. It's like taking the one thing and going deeper with it. And that's how you can shift the needle. And then the next um, mistake, if we say the mistake with air quotes, is um, not including your partner. So this is not, I speak to women all the time. We're dealing with female fat or fertility, but we're always coaching couples. Obviously, if you're single by choice, we'll, we will we'll support you as well. But, um, and, 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 and the man is typically open-minded, whatever he needs to do to make the changes, he's willing. Um, sometimes the man doesn't want to get on the call. <laughs> he's exhausted. <laughs> he doesn't want to make any of these changes anymore because maybe you followed some of those generalized recommendations, told him that he can't ride his bike, told him that he can't drink alcohol, told him that he has to pound down a bunch of fertility supplements. And he's like, I'm exhausted by all this is not, you know, I don't, I don't know if it's, it's, if it's worth it, if it's working, I can't have any fun. Our life is on hold. This sucks. And so that's why it's important to look at his semen, look at his blood chemistry and be able to take a targeted approach to this. And, and it's not about you reminding 
nagging your partner. That's an absolute recipe for disaster. He's a grown man and he will have his own goals given to him by one of our coaches. So he'll have his own goals and you'll have yours. And it's none of your business what he's doing. So and it's some people get worried, you know, he's thwarting the efforts. He's over here drinking. What should I do? He wants the baby just as badly as you do. So a lot of the times the guys will, will feel they need to be supportive for the woman, um, but they're equally as in pain. Like this is something you're doing together to expand your family. And he may, he just may not know what he can do. If he's like, my semen's fine, but is it optimal? And then if his semen is fine and all his blood chemistry is fine, we never yet find, find a man that's completely perfect, but there's always something you can do to work on his health. Um, even then from an immense mental, emotional side of things, being able to, how's your relationship? Are you single-mindedly pursuing the baby and forgot about the relationship with your partner? Is this thing tearing you guys apart instead of bringing you closer together? Cause it will either, you know, tear, tear you apart or, or it'll bring you, bring you closer together to be able to, to communicate and like strengthen your relationship. So you have this very solid foundation as you expand your family. So it's really important. We don't nag. We don't, we don't give you our, our part, partner orders. Um, I've been there. It is a recipe for disaster. So, um, and it just re- leads to arguments and tension. Okay, people yelling at me where, t- you know, the woman's yelling, I'm taking the baby off the table. I'm done with this. And so it's just, it's, it can be horrible. So a lot of the times it is being able to like, do you need therapy? Do you need counseling? So as part of our program, we have, we have um, a mindset support. So if you are having, you know, issues right now with your partner, getting that counseling and just being proactive about it, right? That's, that's like courageous where you'd be like, you know what, instead of sweeping under the sand saying, you know what, this is tough. This is a, like, you're in the middle of a struggle right now, the messy middle. And so it's hard to see that there's going to be, you know, there's going to be a, a finish line when you're stuck in it. There's a lot of uncertainty. There's impatience, putting a lot of pressure on yourself, feeling like, you know, it's now or never. And, and then that can put a strain on the relationship. So to be able to parent, you know, mother and father, mother and mother and father, mother and father yourself right now, um, being, being able to, you know, to, to parent yourself now and, and focus on what things that make you happy now, because that's what brings in the baby. If you're like, I will be happy when the baby comes, then, you know, does the baby know it's safe to, 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 to come in because you're overworking, overstressing, putting all this pressure on yourself worrying, you know, worrying all, all this piece and being able to, it's not about, you know, in a Pollyanna way, being able to visualize this, it's being able to say each step at this step, at this point, I'm going to do this. And then when I've done that, I'll do this sort of in a, in a, in a logical way uh, to know that, you know, it's, 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 there is a beginning and a middle and an end to every, every struggle. So as we say right now, you're, you're caught in the messy middle and that uncertainty can be overwhelming. Um, and so it's important to include your partner. So he's there for, um, support. He's making these changes as well, because this stuff is life-changing as you, you know, make these targeted changes, diet and lifestyles, looking at foods that serve you, healing your gut, working the mental, emotional stuff, addressing the, your adrenals. Maybe you, you have got thyroid issues. Maybe you've got blood sugar issues. Those are some of the themes we see, but the environmental toxins we're exposed to as you make all these changes it is life-changing and you'll never look at health medicine the same again, because you'll know that you're in charge, that it's empowering. We don't need to wait for the person in the white coat. We can hire the person in the the white coat as we see fit and they work for us. And then we bring a team around us, but we know our body best. And so just thinking of one right now where, um, where she had three failed IVFs, her FSH was in the eighties. Um, she was told, um, that donor eggs were her only option. She went to work and made the changes. Um, we found she had the non-celiac gluten sensitivity. She had gut infections, blood sugar, thyroid, protein absorption issues, and adrenal issues. Made the changes within um, seven months, her or six months, her FSH came down to a seven. She went to see the REI. He said it was a miracle. It was a miracle, but she did the work to meet the miracle part way. So, and then they did the IVF and it worked this time and she had her baby boy. So this is after being told that nothing would work. So there's, there's when, you know, when we, th- when we make these targeted changes, um, there's things we can do to improve the chances of this working. And so, and another one is um, um, many times people from the dietary piece. So actually I'm just going to re- uh, just recap here. So we've got, 
We want to make sure we're looking at some of those symptoms that we're dealing with, digestion, mood, skin, joint, autoimmune, if you're dealing with that. If you're dealing with those generalized recommendations, maybe you read it starts with the egg and you've made those generalized recommendations and went, eh, it doesn't work. But have we gone, you know, have we done, have we gone deep enough? What's been missed? Personalized approach. And then we did this all by ourselves and forgot to include our partner. We did a whole bunch of group programs. Don't include the partner. So we, as I say, will coach partners, uh, coach, coach couples, or if you're single by choice. Um, and so the Fafferl method is we will um, do those food, stool, genetics. We also do additional testing. We'll look at your uh, health history. You might want to do vaginal microbiome. There's, there's, you can look at the, um, the uh, podcast episode on vaginal microbiome, especially if you've been dealing with UTIs or thrush or miscarriage, anyone on the fertility journey, the vaginal microbiome is a very inexpensive test that can give us a lot of insight, making sure you have the beneficial bacteria there, which is important for the, 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 the sperm to get to the egg. Um, the hair testing for heavy metals, we're doing that blood chemistry review for both you and your partner. Then we're gonna give you that, that targeted action plan, so the diet and lifestyle changes to then fast track your chances of pregnancy success. So at the end of the program, you'll either be happily pregnant, or if you do need to go to the fertility clinic, you're going to dramatically improve your chances of success. Many times people think IVF is the first step, that that's the fast track. The fast track is working on your health. Because what we see is people have spent tens of thousands of dollars doing IVF. They haven't worked on their health, or they might have worked on their health a little bit. Most people have done something. So I shouldn't say that. Most people have done something. This is about the tweak with the testing, and you'll have the data in front of you so then you can make an informed decision when IVF is right for you rather than just rolling the dice and gambling and thinking, okay, it seems like I'm going to, you know, they're, they're telling me to do it next month. I better do it. Meanwhile, you've got an autoimmune disease. You're dealing with skin issues. You are, you always have like IBS your whole life. You've got a mood issue and ADHD and they're like, you know, just go ahead. And then no one's addressed any of these things and you're wondering why it's not working. Well, those are red flags for us to dig deeper. So we're not anti-IVF. We're pro-health. The fast track is your is your health. When you work on that, healthy pregnancy, healthy postpartum period, healthy children, all these pieces. Obviously, we never guarantee all those things, but you're going to improve your chances of having that. Whereas if you haven't focused on the health, you know, there's – and then we see a lot of people cycle after cycle putting all those hormones in your body, and we don't know the long-term risk of that piece to your health. So it is about um, focusing in on this – and take in a very targeted manner, getting the data, being able to have the the, the decision that the, the, you're empowered to be able to make the decision when you feel it's necessary to go to IVF and whatever feels, feels right for your next steps. So if you're ready to, um, and we specialize in low AMH, high FSH, premature ovarian insufficiency, diminished ovarian reserve. Um, so if you've been told donor eggs are your only option, if you try for two years, if you had a failed IVF, Feel free to uh, book a call. Just go to fabfertile.com. So fabfertile.com and do apply here. We'll, we'll, we'll book a call with you and your partner, come up with a plan and help you to improve your chances of this working. Um, excited to chat with you. Take care.